basically there's this guy in the closet. Here, let me see if I can find my notes really quickly. My name is Rindon Johnson. I'm an artist and a writer. I deal a lot with poetry and with sculpture and the three-dimensionality of language. No, it doesn't, but I think I need to make one up now. <laughs> um, the interface that I'm gonna talk about today is called D'Artagnan. It's a poetry generator that my little sibling made for me. Run. You return a headset on to make myself all the sun sculptures. The devil hindered Noah's work. How even dismisses it, like I apply a chocolate and they come true radical makes me and in borders. His skin started to entertain is so here installed the whole with metal brown hide in our planet. In overlay, envelope me if any birthmarks are useless to see you. That was a good, I like that one. That's a good one. There's a perception that people write from a blank page or a blank word document and then start writing. I don't think language comes from an empty space. It's a social thing. It's how we communicate with one another and it helps construct our social understandings. So the idea that you could write something that's relevant to other people from a blank slate is, it's preposterous. <laughs> The way that I started writing was often by listening and I would kind of just wait around until someone said something that I thought was awesome or interesting. The way that D'Artagnan works is actually really similar because so much of it is about what sounds good and what happens to kind of tickle my ear. The key thing that you have to make sure that you're doing is that you're calling to a particular text that you already have that exists. We're calling to a manuscript that I've already written, and now we're just gonna press click, and it's gonna start showing me different manifestations of that same manuscript in a particular chunk of information. I wanted to make my own language generation tool because I needed a way to mimic my usual writing practice on demand. D'Artagnan uses a series of different off-the-shelf things to function. It's employed through um, something called processing, which is basically a software that is often used for uh, running and visualizing JavaScript. It uses something called Rita, a toolkit um, created by someone called Daniel Howe. Basically, it allows for someone to create their own computational language generators. It has a lot of those grammatical rules, it has syntax, etc. I think it's important to see technology as something that can be repurposed because nothing is fixed. And so if we can look at technology as a space where um, things are malleable and things are changeable, it means that we won't get stuck. Now that we've got it up and running, let's look at ways that we can change it. So let's see. We wanna change the way that the words are putting themselves together and how much of the original manuscript is gonna be called to um, in our generation. So we're gonna change this thing called the temperature. Right now it's at 0.9, let's change it to 0.5 and see what happens. Press run. And so you can see that now with a different temperature, the language looks completely different. And so it goes from being with our temperature at 0.5, this line, which is almost complete from the manuscript, in one particular scarring ritual, the young men become, and then that's original, and then it chooses a whole new um, noun for the men to become. In this circumstance, it's chosen the car. But with our temperature at 0.9, things are way crazier. So it's like, men seem to crawl into holes in the kitchen. I didn't write that. One day, she caught an entire lizard. I did write an entire lizard, but I didn't write one day she caught an entire lizard.
Okay. Oh, good, they're calling me. Okay, I'm gonna answer. My sibling made this, so it's better if they talk about it. The orb has a question about temperature. So the temperature is uh, what determines how randomized the text is. So um, it is basically thinking about do you, how much logic do you want to have? Um, and it, it's on a scale from zero to one. So one is like super crazy, where zero um, is really rigid. Um, so we put it at a 0.7 for now. So that way it's actually just um, trying to pull from a uh, more stabilized um, randomizer. Does that make sense? Like the temperature will basically tell you, oh, okay, does it, how much do you care about the parts of speech and the order that they come in? Like, when you're talking about grammar, you're talking about temperature? Right. Temperature is grammar. Whereas, grammar is temperature. Exactly. And, and, and grammar gram is, is the number of words that you're pulling at a given time. I think grammar builds worlds in that if you create a set of rules and you say, these are the rules that we are going to follow as we go through our day-to-day -day life, then you construct a particular type of reality, right? And if you say, I want different rules, or I want a different reality, then you could maybe make something new. Behind Rita are Markov chains, uh, which are a way to statistically model random processes. In the case of D'Artagnan, it's looking at a series of words or a single word, a good way to think about a Markov chain might be to think about it in relation to the weather. So you collect a whole bunch of data on sunny days and cloudy days. The Markov chain essentially allows you to take the probability of the future by looking at the present. Let's say that today is a rainy day. Um, according to my model, it's more likely that tomorrow will be a rainy day, but it's not impossible that tomorrow could be a sunny day. I mean, I think it, I honestly, it would be funny if I just did nothing. <laughs> there was fake rain. I'm just like, it's a rainy day. I mean, I suppose I understand language as an infrastructure and in that it's a form of culture. It can hold our cultures inside of itself. So the language that you speak is also the world that you come from. Sometimes I put stuff in D'Artagnan that I don't like, <laughs> that I disagree with, or that makes me feel shitty. And I see if maybe in that rearranging that there's something more. There are so many lines of continuation that I see between blackness and language. Blackness is a construct and language is a construct. I am very aware of how dangerous it is. At the same time, I do find myself desperately searching for ways to, like I do with D'Artagnan, to kind of eat it up and spit it out in a new way. And so in this way, I feel like it is a very necessary exercise as a black person, especially from the United States, to suggest that there are many ways to be black and there are many ways to speak. And with the poetry machine, it's kind of just like, okay, give me more ways, give me more possibilities, more, more options. What we do is we give it a degree of randomness. So this is called the n-gram, um, which is what kind of determines the, the number of words that you want to pull at a given point. So what I mean by that is like, do you want to deconstruct the text so you're only grabbing word for word? Or do you want to deconstruct the text so you're grabbing uh, three words at a time, or you're grabbing a whole like 10 words or a phrase at a time? So that tells you the level of randomness um, that the sentence will become. So if you have a really high n-gram, which would be anything kind of bigger than three, then you're basically saying, hey, just pull phrases. Uh, whereas if you have a low n-gram of one, you're saying just pull a single word at a time. Rita and my poetry machine, D'Artagnan, allow me to work with language in a social way. I can use YouTube or I can use um, Twitch and I can take 
the language from a transcript or from a conversation and see if something in there might work as a line of poetry. Thank you.